Hey guys, it's Miss Black with another art tutorial video for you guys at home. And actually any of you guys, because I know that we've talked about how you can go onto my website, even if you're not a distance learner, and do projects at home. This is welcome to anybody. Uh, what we're looking about at today for this project is we're learning about something, some things in nature and living things and how they change over time. And I have this really cool book that has lots of really cool art ideas. And I found one really interesting one, which made me want to it, to research this thing. And so I found a really cool video about the anatomy of tree rings and what they mean. So hopefully you guys have already watched this video that I've linked to my website. But if you haven't, I would definitely pause the video, um, pause this video, go and watch it, and then come back to this video because with that understanding, you're going to create a much more interesting, possibly, um, project. So make sure you watch that video about about what these tree mean, uh, tree rings. Sorry, that's a tongue twister. Tree rings mean and how they can tell the story of a, a tree's life and then come back and make sure that you understand that because artists, before they create something, especially something that they are wanting to learn about, they like to research that thing. So they go on the internet or they go to the library and they look these things up and they try to understand it because artists, when they have an understanding of the thing they're trying to draw or create their pictures or their paintings or their drawings or whatever it is that they're creating, turns out to be a whole lot better. So make sure that you understand this before we get started. But what we're going to do is we're going to draw our own bark, and that's what this is actually depicting. We're looking just straight down as if we had cut a tree down, and we're looking at what, this is called a cross section. So we're looking at a cross section of a tree. Now you don't, you might find out in the video, um, a lot of scientists and a lot of people that that study these things, biologists, um, go and they look at trees and they try to figure out the history of the tree. And a lot of the time um, in the past, they've cut them down, but they figured out a way to do this with a tool to read the, the cycle of the tree, which is really interesting. Um, but right now we're pretending like we cut this tree down and we're looking at it and we're gonna draw this thing, okay? So what you're gonna need today is a piece of paper and I just have a printer paper, like from my printer here, and I have a pen. And I would suggest drawing with a pen. This is just a regular black ballpoint pen. I would suggest drawing with a pen for this project, um, not only because it creates a really good line quality, but it also helps you to make a decision. So when you're drawing with a pen, rather than a pencil. You can't erase the pen, so it makes you uh, decide to make a mark, and you know that when you make that mark, you can't erase it and change your mind. And that's actually a really good practice for artists. So we're going to be using a pen today, so if you're at home, make sure you go and ask your folks for a ballpoint pen. It doesn't have to be black, it could be any color that you have at home, but the the thing that I'm looking for is the line quality that comes with the pen and the fact that you can't go back on a decision that you've made. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to draw a big circle. We're not going to draw a little circle like this. That is too small, okay? And the, uh, the reason for that is because we'd have to draw teeny tiny lines for the, the rings and then what we're trying to show is a tree that's lived a nice long life, but when you only see a few rings, that's a tree that's only lived a really short life. So make sure that it's not too small, but then again, also don't make it too big so that you can't see the whole circle. Okay, so if your circle's going off the page like this, that is too big. Okay, we wanna make it um, almost as big as the paper. Okay, so don't do this and don't do this. That's too big and too small. We want to kind of do the Goldilocks thing and make it just right. And if you have something at home that you would like to trace for this, you're welcome to do that if you have like maybe a big bowl to trace. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to 
um, draw a circle. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle because trees are not perfect circles. This one that you saw on this example here is not a perfect circle, okay? It can have these little bends and twists and turns in it. So actually, it your line quality would look better if you drew your own circle. But if you're not comfortable drawing your own circle and you'd rather trace, of course you're welcome to do that, okay? Um, the best thing to do when you're trying to draw a nice size circle is to move your arm without drawing in that motion so that your arm is really used to that, that movement and really comfortable with that movement. And once you have that movement down with your arm, you can just put your pen down. So I'm going to do that for my trunk here. I'm trying to figure out the best, you know, the most comfortable way to draw this circle. And I'm not drawing it yet, I'm just trying to get that movement down, and then I'm comfortable, and now I've drawn this. And you see that this is not a perfect circle, right? We've got this, it's a little flat on this side, and that's okay. And hopefully, since you've watched that video, you remember that sometimes when the tree is living, it goes through different things to make this happen. So this is something that could really happen in, in nature. So you're going to start with a circle. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw the bark. And that's the, the thing that's on the um, outward side of your circle. Okay. So what we're going to draw for this bark is a whole lot of different lines. But first we're going to draw another line that follows this movement that we've drawn for our first circle. And this line, you're just going to put your pen down and you can see I'm just following that movement. And it doesn't have to be smooth. In fact, it's probably better if you make it a little wobbly because trunk, uh, sorry, not trunk, but bark is a really rough texture. So you wanna think about that as you're drawing this. What kind of texture am I trying to show here? And I'm trying to show a rougher texture. Okay, so we've got that. This would be the inner part of our tree trunk where the rings are going to be and then this is the bark okay and then inside this from this line so this the inside line to the outside line you're going to just draw a series of little lines that show the bark and you're going to make it look almost as if because lines when they get closer together they start to look darker so you're going to make this look kind of dark. One thing that you're not going to do, let me just show you on this. So you, let's say you draw a tree that big and you've got your bark. What I don't want to see with this part when you're drawing those lines is I don't want to see scribbles. Okay, that's not a, that's not good line quality. It might feel good, but when you get to the end of your project, you might um, regret doing that. So what I'm doing is just a series of lines and when you get them close together, it starts to look darker. So that's what I'm going to do here. Maybe I won't do that for this whole video, but I will show you in a time lapse if, um, if you'd like to watch that. And then maybe you could even draw like even little um, ovals. You could do that. That could add some really cool texture to this. You also want to follow the movement of maybe these bumps and bends that you've drawn in the bark. So you're not just going to do straight lines like this. They're going to be kind of squiggly almost and wobbly lines just like this. Okay, and you're going to do that all the way around. Now for the sake of time, I don't want you just to sit there and watch me doing this. Even though while I'm doing this, you guys are working, I don't want to waste your time by making you watch me do this whole thing. So I'm going to post another video that is in time lapse and I'll get, I'll get this done in, in that video. But you're going to go all the way around doing this type of pattern and texture. Okay, so the next step would be to start drawing those life rings. So those those year to year things that happened to the tree. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the center of the circle that we've drawn. 
that's not the center, is it? We're going to find, you're going to find the closest, the one that makes it like around the same um, distance. So if you were to put your finger in the middle and maybe your thumb on the outside and you turn the paper around, you're not having to move your thumb because it's in the middle, right? If I put it here, I'd have to keep moving my thumb, right? So I want to make sure it's in the middle or as close to the middle as we can. And we're going to draw a little bit of a crack that's in the middle. And it might be just like a few lines. So here's my middle. And then we've got this little crack. This crack is not going to go all the way to the edge though. Sometimes they do in really old trees or trees that are almost dying. But what we're looking at here is a tree that just barely got chopped down and we're looking at its life cycle. So we're going to just do little lines in the center. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start drawing those, those year life cycle um, rings. So you're going to start in the middle. And when a tree just barely starts to grow, these rings are really close together because the trees, when they just start to grow, take a really long time to grow. So their growing cycle, they do not grow very much once they pop up from the seed. They don't grow very tall or wide until they start getting older. So these lines are going to be way close together. That's what that means. And you might uh, remember that from the video. Okay, so these lines are really close together, maybe all the way up until the edge of these, these um, outward, I'm going to call them like spider lines because that kind of looks like a spider. So these circles, you're going to just follow the movement and go around. And they don't have to be perfectly even or parallel to each other and parallel i don't know if you've seen in other videos parallel are lines that just never touch right so if they were to keep going on and on they would never touch um, the same thing can happen in a circle like this if i were to draw a circle that would just be perfect circles they are not perfect circles in a tree ring that go out per not perfect parallel circles Okay, so you're going to draw wobbly circles and things like that because that's how trees grow. The, every year that they grow is not perfect. Maybe they do have some perfect years where they grew really consistently, but trees aren't perfect just like we aren't perfect. So your lines aren't going to be perfect either. And maybe once it gets to the edge of these little spider lines, these rings might start to grow farther apart. You're just thinking about the way that your tree grew and you can make up your own story for your tree. So this one, this year would have been a bigger growing year for this tree. And maybe my next year is even bigger. And then maybe the next year was a little hard of a year. Maybe it was like a really harsh winter or maybe it had a parasite, or maybe it had a bunch of bugs eating its leaves. So this year, this growing year wasn't as, uh, didn't grow as big as this year, if that makes sense. So if it's thicker, it had a better growing year or growing season. If it's thinner, it went through some struggles that year. So we're gonna think about that. Maybe my next um, year, the tree grew like a good amount, but maybe, it kind of swayed over to the side because it got knocked over a little bit by some, like maybe some animal knocked it over or maybe there was an earthquake like we experienced this year and it moved the tree or the windstorm. Remember that big windstorm we had this year? So that can make the, the tree have to compensate so it grew thicker over here so that the tree didn't just fall over, right? So you're gonna be thinking about these different things as you grow or as, sorry, as you draw your little growth circles. And you're going to be thinking about these all the way to the edge of your tree. And maybe the 
this one's really thin because it maybe it went through a super huge drought that year and maybe that drought continued okay and you don't have to do exactly what I, I'm doing in fact I hope you're not doing exactly what I'm doing because I want you guys to be your own artists you guys are different artists than me so I hope that you guys are doing different things than me maybe there was a fire that year and this part of the tree got burnt okay but then the next year there would still be growth on that thing that happened maybe the next year was a really good growing year and as you can see this line quality with this pen looks really good so that's a really good reason to um, draw with pen it's because the line quality is so smooth I'm not stopping and trying to sketch the ring I'm just going for it so hopefully that's what you're doing at home so I'm going to continue this all the way to the edge and I think I'm just going to continue this. I'm not going to add this to the time lapse. Maybe this growth year was really good. But maybe it needed to compensate over here. For something. And then maybe this one wasn't so great. Maybe it had a disease. All the way to the end. So as you draw each ring, you're thinking about what this tree might have gone through during that year. Because each ring is a year that it, what it, that it lived. And I'm almost to the edge here. This one's almost there. So maybe so that I can get it to this edge here, I'll put a really thick part right there. And you're just really just trying to fill this circle in. Maybe it's really thin over here because it didn't need to grow as much over there. But maybe it's thick over here too. Okay, so I'm going to call that. Um, and then in the outside of your tree, you're going to think about what kind of tree this was. So maybe it's a maple tree, maybe it's an elm tree, whatever tree you like. And you might even go look outside and look at other trees or maybe even just look at the ground and see leaves that have fallen from the trees and choose a leaf that you really like. And then around this, this stump, I would call it, you're going to draw those types of leaves. Okay. And actually, I've got images of different leaves in here. And maybe you can choose from one of those. Okay. So if you like any of these, except this type of tree, well, it could be any, actually. This could be, uh, this is like a pine tree. So maybe there's needles around it. This is a, um, a maple tree. This is a oak tree. This is, I forget what this one is. It looks like a chestnut, maybe, tree, or maybe that's a chestnut. But you're, oh, no, you know what? This looks like a sycamore leaf. So you're just going to think about the type of tree it is. And you're going to draw those different leaves around your tree. Because this tree is no longer living and its leaves would be around it in nature. So I'm kind of a sucker for oak leaves. So I'm going to be drawing some of these regular looking oak leaves. But like I said, you guys could, um, you could draw any leaf you want. Here's some more examples. Except this one, this is more like a shamrock. You wouldn't see this growing on a tree. But these are pretty cool. These types of leaves, I think this is more like an elm tree leaf. 
Okay? So hopefully you get some ideas from that. Or you can just go ahead and explore outside and choose a leaf that you see out there. So I'm just going to draw some leaves. And you might remember from one of these last projects we've done on my website that um, there's a thing such as overlapping. So I might want to draw like a leaf pile around here. Or you guys could just draw like just leaves if you want. But if you want to show those leaves um, kind of like overlapping, so maybe these leaves are on, on the top and there's other leaves underneath it, then you're going to think about positive and negative space. So inside this leaf, that is the positive space, outside this leaf is called negative space. And that's where you can draw your other leaves that might be underneath it. So this is overlapping those. So let's say I want to draw another leaf like this. Underneath this leaf, I would draw my line. So like this center vein. And I would not draw it through this leaf because that would be really confusing and then this wouldn't really look like so much like a leaf. So I'm gonna, this is my center vein and then I'm going to draw these little squigglies or whatever leaf that you're drawing. And I'm going to stop for this positive space and then jump back over here back to where the negative space is. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then now that looks like that leaf is underneath this leaf. Okay. And so I'm going to put those leaves in the time lapse as well um, so that you can see this as a finished product. But that is the project, and I hope you guys liked it. Um, stay tuned for a time lapse to see a finished project on my end. And then I would just so love it if you could take a picture of this somehow. Maybe you could do a screenshot on your Chromebook or... Um, I think that you can use like your uh, webcams to take a photo of something. If you could totally, if you could take a photo of that, I would totally love it if you would send it to me on my website so that I can see how you guys are doing. And I really miss seeing your artwork. So please send it to me so that I can see it. And I look forward to seeing that. And I hope you guys have fun drawing your tree life rings. Thanks, you guys.